and welcome to Region 7 Zoomcasts, where we conduct interviews with our Region 7 colleagues to learn about the perils and perils related to our COVID-19 response in the hopes of sharing lessons learned and learning something new that we can all benefit from. Today, we're going to talk with Sonia Bell, who actually lives in Georgia, in Atlanta, but she's really an Iowa native from the great city of Carroll, Iowa. Um, she has graciously agreed to talk to us about her experience being a phase one study participant in the vaccine trials. So please join me in welcoming Sonia to our Region 7 Zoomcast. So, hi, Sonia. Uh, we hi, like Kate. To, it's so nice to um, see you in this area. And, you know, we do work together quite a lot um, mm -hmm. in one of the grants that we work together on. Um, so it's really nice to be able to just sit and have a conversation with you that's absolutely not work related and, and not too let, much anyway, not too much, <laughs> and, you know, let me get to know a little bit more about you um, doing this vaccine because I remember I was a little worried for you when you first did it. Um, so, so tell us first of all though, um, what have you been doing during this COVID pandemic response? I know you've been pretty busy. Yes. So professionally or personally? Mm, or prof all. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. If you're, if you're <laughs> yeah, because uh, you can stay all day. Well, well, as you know, so I um, have the honor of working with you, Kate, uh, alongside you in the National Emerging Special Pathogens Training and Education Center. Um, I'm based in Atlanta, though, out of Emory University. However, as you mentioned, I am a proud Hawkeye. So I originated from Region 7, and now I just reside in Region 4. But, um, but so I've been working alongside some of the response for COVID with the education training initiatives from NETEC, um, and then also with Emory University with our own program. Um, I work in the infectious disease division as an assistant program director. So I work alongside faculty colleagues and nursing colleagues with some of our own preparedness efforts at Emory University. And then personally, uh, I, I'm a working mom, I'm a wife. We've been juggling the whole school thing like everybody else, juggling the whole boring summer like everybody else. Um, yeah, and then of course got the vaccine. So just been juggling those things. Hmm. Yeah. So, so how did you get involved in that vaccine trial? So I did have a bit of an in because I do work in the ID division at Emory. I know the faculty who were running the vaccine hmm. study when it first got stood up. So I was able to email and I just kind of asked them, hey, are you still looking for volunteers? I have I happen to have been involved in two vaccine yeah, two vaccine studies in the past, in my early 20s, which was X amount of years ago, <laughs> and, and then a couple of years ago at Emory. Um, so I have participated in research studies before as a subject, uh, was very interested in this, largely because, honestly, working alongside like my colleagues at Emory, like Sharon, yourself, Kate, Shelley, our colleagues up in New York City, I'm not clinical. So I can't be on the front lines, but this was something I could do and I knew I would be good at and it would be a major help in progressing the science forward. So I emailed and I got an appointment to get screened and that's how it started. Okay, so phase one, I mean, th mm -hmm. that is the very beginning, you know, is, this isn't the 300,000 candidates. These are just a few people that get involved in that. Did you have any reservations? Uh, I, you guys would probably say naively, I did not, I guess <laughs> I, maybe I should have, but, uh, I, you know, it could have been just because I've been involved with this work and watching all of you guys work. And then also knowing the faculty and how hard they work and how well they know their craft and their science. I really wasn't that concerned about it. Uh, they did a really great job of educating us too and screening us ahead of time. So mm -hmm. naively, I was able to just go into it and not be all that concerned. So I wasn't. So what kind of screening did they do? Uh, they, I, I think it probably amounts to about three screenings. The first one is a phone screen, <clears throat> which just entails basically, you know, going through your medical history and making sure you screen out of some basic stuff. Um, and then you progress to progress to the in-person screening where they do a bit more in-depth, actually take vitals, kind of do a bit, a bit of a physical, and then also take your blood, I think like nine or 12 tubes of blood to check everything. And then if that all comes back within some very strict 
Like I'm fairly healthy and I was still on the edges of some levels that almost made me not eligible to participate like iron stuff like that. Oh. But if you, you have to come within these very strict parameters and if you do, then uh, you're screened in to become a vaccine study candidate. Wow. So, so you felt pretty confident that, you know, they were screening you well and mm -hmm. you would be safe. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did. They did a very comprehensive workup. And then they did a lot. They spent a lot of time educating. I mean, I had cell phone numbers to call people if I needed to, if I had any concerns or questions or anything would, you know, God forbid, bad happen. So, yeah, they did a really good job of providing all of that. So one of the other um, study participants, uh, he was in a phase three trial. Um, Mike, I'm sure you um, yeah. you, know, you know him very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was telling us that you know he was given like a, a, a tape measure and he had to measure the induration um, for his his sight and things like that. Did you do that as well? Yes. Yeah. So uh, post vaccination, both times, we had to record temperatures. Um, Oh gosh, I can't remember. I think it was only once a day, once a day for a week or so. And then yes, we had to have the ruler. We had to measure any sort of redness or swelling at the injection site um, mm -hmm. for that same length of time. We had phone follow-up. So I had I had um, phone calls with the PI or her nurse, um, I think each, like, each day after vaccine injection, I think maybe even two times maybe. Um, and then in person a week after. So they were checking up on us pretty much constantly. That, that's really good. That, that would give you a reassuring feeling. At yes. least it, it would me yes. if, they, if they were checking up on me all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so, so the point of this isn't really to get people to join vaccine trials. What, what I really want to talk about is how did it feel? How, you know, mm -hmm. um, what did it feel like getting that vaccine? Did you have any problems? So... I, um, so the vaccine trial, I was part of the Moderna mRNA one, uh, the phase one, sorry, squeaky chair, the phase one, there was 45 of us between Atlanta and Washington, I believe. Uh, so 15 got 15 micrograms, uh, and then a hundred and then 250. I just happened to be part of the cohort, 15 people got, who got the 250 dose twice. Um, yeah. So the, as far as I've heard anecdotally, the 50 and the 100 um, did not have very many side effects. The 15 of us who had the 250 twice, the first time was fine. The shot just kind of felt like a, a less than a flu shot. It kind of bugged you because it, they gave you a shot, but it was mm. a couple hours. The second shot a month later though, I did, uh, I did end up getting uh, chills, fever, headache, and kind of slight COVID-ish type of flu-ish type of symptoms for about 24 hours and then it went away. So, but the the one that they just published about with the efficacy of 94.5%, that's at the 100 right. dose level. So, so, so you had a much higher dose than what yes. you know, people are going to be getting. Yes, I had a much, much larger dose. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Wow, um, but it still sounds like it was pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. side effects yeah. that you had yeah I mean yeah. it felt like a it felt kind of like a bad cold I was tired and I did I did end up you know calling out for the rest of the afternoon from work just because I knew what it was um but I was normal by that evening that next day so yeah that's good and I, I'm very relieved that you were back to normal that's for yes for sure <laughs> yes. And, so. you, and I should know too and they did you know I was able to text the doctor when you know, I've received those symptoms. She was able to tell me, you know, we've heard a lot of this with the people who had this larger dose. Um, it's okay. Of course, if you're concerned, just, you know, they gave me all everything I needed in case I did get more concerned, but um, mm -hmm. did a really good job of educating me too. So um, just had some Advil and rest. So with Mike, I mean, he mm -hmm. doesn't know if he got the actual dose or not. You know, he may yeah. have gotten a placebo. Was that the same for you in the beginning? No, I for sure received the 250 twice. Okay. And you knew that you had the actual vaccine. Yes. The, yep. the actual medication. Mm -hmm. So did you, did they advise you to continue taking precautions to not get COVID? Yes. Yes. Especially early, early on when they were first, uh, I mean, they took, gosh, they took so much blood. Um, 
uh, early on, you know, I do believe that they knew that we were developing antibodies. And of course, I'm not faculty, so I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think they knew for sure if it was neutralizing antibodies. They just knew that we were developing something, but they mm-hmm. were still figuring out what that was. So, um, and then also in the interim, they didn't, I was super safe when I first received it too, because I didn't want to screw up the study results and actually get COVID and then throw everything awry. Um, so selfishly, I didn't want to get it for myself or my family and also larger scale. I did not want to screw up the study by getting it. Um, but, uh, but no, they still, you know, obviously, <clears throat> like I kind of joke, it's not like I can walk around with, I'm vaccinated, like you know, yeah. like a necklace or something. So yes, they still coached us to take precautions. I still wear a mask everywhere. Um, and it's also just, you know, like I have to lead by example for my children, you know, my family. Mm-hmm. So have, have you been around or been in close contact with anybody that has gotten COVID? Actually, no. Okay. I, uh, knock on, knock on wood. I have not actually. Um, yeah, not no. I I guess I have one family member who did get it, but I had not. I haven't been around her for a couple of weeks prior to her getting it, so it wasn't mm. the close contact at all. Well, that that's really good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so one of the things that I think about too, you know, you did mention earlier on that it was, was the mRNA, so this messenger RNA type vaccine. It's you know, it's mm-hmm. brand new technology. Um, it's almost like trailblazing, like making history in a way. It, it is, but of no, it is not. Um, uh, it, it's, you know, it's funny. It'll be interesting. Hopefully, um, you know, HHS, whoever can kind of help with some of the education around this, but I have had mm-hmm. friends who don't know much about it and they hear mRNA and they think it's monkey DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, it's just, it's the, like the DNA of the virus. That's, it's not, they're not giving us monkey DNA. I swear. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so it is trailblazing and I think it's fascinating because it's obviously beyond just the COVID it's going to mm-hmm. pave the way for all the other stuff. Like who knows what other kind of vaccines can be made this way so much more simply. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. A- anything that you want to tell people about getting the vaccine? You know, a lot of people are worried about the safety or, you know, some people may be wanting to put it off until a lot more other folks get it. Uh, just it, there's, you know, as someone who received the most of the vaccine that you can receive, it really was not, it's just I have no long-term effects from it. It's really was no worse than the flu vaccine. Um, you know, and it's just such a selfless, it's just the right thing to do for your community, for your loved ones, for your friends. Mm-hmm. And it's just such a simple thing to do is just to get that vaccine and it'll just get everything back to normal so much sooner. Like I just, yeah. selfishly, that was another reason why I did it. I just want to get back to normal. I want my girls to go to gymnastics and I want normal school schedules and I want to travel, Kate. I really miss <laughs> hotel rooms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that was definitely one of the ways that we worked together. So I, I look forward to that again. Yes. I miss seeing you mm-hmm. in uh, convention halls and right. in and airports, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the days that we would complain that our, our plane was delayed. I don't think we'll do that anymore. No, no. Mm-mm. I'm so looking forward to that. I want to complain about that once again. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all thanks to people like you, Sonia. You know, if, if these study comp- or these drug companies that are making these vaccines, if they didn't have people like you who were willing to take that step to say, hey, try it out on me, you know, we may not be here right now you know, looking at a vaccine. So, you know, from my heart, thank you. You know, I, well, I'm, I wasn't brave enough to stand up and, and volunteer, but. Um, well, from, from my heart, that was only one little piece because now you have to figure out how to disseminate it to everybody. So, <laughs> so yeah. my piece was small compared to everything that you and, you know, Our public all of my dear, dear mm-hmm. colleagues at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. I heart you guys and you're working so hard. And thank you for everything you're doing. I wish there was something more I could do because I know you guys are just like in the thick of it right now. And we're thinking of you down here in Georgia. So, yeah. 
So everybody wear a mask, wash your hands, and when the vaccine is available, get vaccinated, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you so much again. We couldn't uh, thank you enough for joining us today and, and letting us know about your experience. And, and I hope it does give, you know, some people a little bit of confidence to know that, you know, it's okay to get the vaccine. Um, you know, be aware, though, definitely be aware, know what the side effects can be and, and make an informed choice. Yes, yep. That's a, that's a great way to put it. Yep. Be aware, take care of yourself. Yep. Great. All right. Well, we hope everyone found something of value in today's conversation. Uh, we want to thank um, all of our guests uh, for your time. That was very much appreciated. Uh, actually, it was just one guest, Sonia. <laughs> um, well, but, and Mike. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and Mike before. Um, but thank you to all of our listeners as well. Thank you for listening in. We'd love to hear from you all, especially if you know someone that we would like to have a conversation with, um, or if there's a topic that you'd like to hear a conversation on. And, and if you have questions that we can help you find answers with, um, please send your ideas to nbu at nebraskamed.com. And again, thank you for listening. And go Hawkeyes. <laughs> uh, or Huskers. <laughs> and and uh, the, the, the rest of the Region 7 teams, I should say. Um, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Bye, Sonia. Bye.